Right, Mr. Otaku Spirit got us a video called Top Anime in Japan for Summer 2024 Season. In my opinion, I feel like it's gonna be Oshinoko and Elusive Samurai. Elusive Samurai because of the sheer amount of Shorakans and the Shora posting that I've seen on Twitter. I'm not sure if those people actually watch the anime. But Oshinoko, I do understand that the North American or at least the global audience, the English speaking audience, it's pretty much dead. But the Japanese audience, it's just like hyping Oshinoko to a next level. Even in like YouTube viewership. Freshest anime by right now, actually. You guys should go check out his uh, reactions, but... Here, I'll prove it. I know we're getting a little bit distracted right now. Oh shit, he's watching. Yo! He's watching Tanya? Alright, we gotta start watching Tanya pretty soon, but... Oshinoko, see? Whenever Freshest anime has the Japanese uh, text in the titles, it means that he's offering also Japanese subtitles, and if you compare Oshinoko and Rochitori numbers, it is unreal. Nobody gets this level of ratio for Rochitori and Oshinoko. The fact that Oshinoko is even, even better than Rochitori just proves that, like, North American global audience is dead, but the Japanese audience is insane. But hey, let's check out what he has to say. Summer 2024 anime season heating up and that's coming to its third quarter. It is time for me to answer the question that every single anime fan has right now. Yes, what? is your favorite anime even popular in Japan? This is a video series that I like to do every single season where we look at all the- Personally, I don't really give a fuck if my anime is popular in Japan. But I guess it does kind of matter in terms of continuity. If you want your series to succeed and get more future seasons, obviously it's going to be better if it's popular in Japan and has global success too available charts that come out of Japan and compare them to what's actually popular in the West. Because yes, like I just every single time, Japan has better taste than we do. The usual disclaimers- <laughs> I don't think Japan has better taste than we do. <clears throat> well, it depends, right? It's more of a joke. How do you ever determine if someone has better taste than others, right? It's, it's a group of ideology of people with differing opinions banding together and saying like our opinion is better than your opinion, <laughs> whatever. Before I get started, that's become technically a meme at this point because everybody just completely disregards it. These rankings are based on different sites, more mm -hmm. geared towards Japanese viewership. This can be through different streaming sites, Japanese television ranking aggregators, and whatnot. All data okay. is taken at the day of the recording and can fluctuate based on episodes airing, availability, exclusivities, early airings, etc. This data is not the end-all be-all. I wonder when he recorded this video, because like if he did this before Oshinoko was popping off, like recently the last three or four episodes, as, as soon as the theater actually started to play, I bet the ratings went up. It's not to say that your favorite anime sucks, even though we joke about that. It's simply an interesting way to analyze the interest in different series. And honestly, it gives us a good perspective on the success of different properties. Because yes, despite how well it does in the West, many companies that are actually funding these anime just mm -hmm. want it to be successful in Japan because and Chainsaw Man was like the exact opposite, right? Where it just flopped in Japan. There's a lot of drama and controversy with the director and the way that they were kind of like pandering towards the Hollywood uh, American-esque uh, theatrics of the anime episodes being made. But then it did well globally, I hear. But in Japan, I hear it was like a bombshell. Because that's where they sell the actual source material. With all that out of the way, let's get started jumping right into global rankings with sites okay. like Mal and Anylist. Yes, Mal and Anylist does not have every single anime fan on them. They are not the end all be all, but. Where's my website Any Chart at, man? Any Chart needs some respect. They're a good way to kind of get a sense of, based on a large pool of people, what exactly they have interest in. Surprisingly, for once, Mal and Annie List are actually pretty on spot with each other. The only okay. real difference we have here is Spice and Wolf and Tower of God are kind of flip-flop with each other. But still, yes, at the top of both of these sites, Tensura third season is just taking the cake. Ring How? It's just like, it's like people will probably call the third season the war season too. Like if we're talking about just like an anime adaptation and like the, amount of people that are upset at the sheer amount of dialogue and meetings due to the nature of the material we're adapting the third season the meetings being important for the future shit i thought that it would fall off incarnate as a slime season three is doing very very well number two and three is the big shocker for me mm. oceanoko is yeah oceanoko i'm telling well we gotta wait till this is still global right we gotta wait for the japanese because as i've shown you and again youtube viewership on YouTube reaction viewership is not end all be all. However, it's still a decent point of metric of data we can point to. And if you look at anyone else's Oshinoko versus their Rochtede reactions for like an English speaking audience, Rochtede is just on top. It is not even fucking fair. But the fact that Freshest Anime that I just showed you, because of the incorporation of the Japanese subtitles, Oshinoko Japanese audience is unreal. Beating My Hero Academia. Now, I will admit that, yes, My Hero Academia is more geared towards 
yes, those shonen watchers that maybe all they watch in anime is just mm -hmm. shonen. There's a lot of those people. And a lot of those people are also most likely kids, right? Doesn't mean that just because something's popular, it's better. But most likely, who has a lot of free time to watch this unga, unga boonga fucking My Caveman, you know, academia? Kids, right? But at least for Mal and Annie Chart's actual membership, it seems like Oshinoko is taking the cake. Going right behind them is actually another big Roshidere. shocker for me, and that is Roshidari. Yes. And you would think of the global rankings, Roshidari would be higher. Alia hides her feelings in Russian. But these are ratings. These are not viewership numbers. These are not like... What is the most viewed uh, TV series or stuff like that? It's just simple Mal and Annie list ratings, right? Is doing really, really well at number four. Yes, and like I said before, Spice and Wolf and Tower of God right here kind of fighting for each other at five and six, which is great. I like to see Spice and Wolf that high. Granted, it has been running for two cores, so it has a lot of momentum to go into this season, but it's still a great thing to see. Then number seven, this <laughs> is easily, easily across all these charts is probably yeah. my biggest shock. Yes, my dear friend, Nokotan. Shock as in it should be higher or that it's this low? I'm very much so surprised that this is this low. Now yeah, I'm not though. Because episode one, again, it kind of delivered in terms of the expectations that the trailers and the openings were. It wasn't promising, but a lot of people, again, I think had misplaced hopes that this would be like the next Nichijou or something. And turns out it's not. And it's a cute show, but again, the hype was too high. They succeeded too hard with the marketing and now they're failing from their success. Now, granted, being top 10 is pretty darn huge yep. for, you know, these types of sites. It is. But at the same time, we're already seeing that drop off of memberships. Oh, yeah. After episode two, people were out. Straight up, the amount of people that were let down by what kind of show this was by then was, they were already out, bro. When we get to about the five or six point. And yes, like I said, my dear friend Nokotan is just struggling. Then number eight for both sites we have with story. This is shameful. How the fuck is Wistoria this low? I feel like Wistoria is better in Tower of God this season in terms of the anime adaptation. Tower of God's fine, it's just that I feel like the studio is kind of dropping the ball and delivering these important scenes. Wistoria, I think, has been just beautiful all across the board in terms of production value. The plot is generic, right? We've seen shit like this before, but the execution of the tropes, I think, is really fun and hype. Wistoria, then Suicide Squad Isekai. How the fuck did this even get this high, bro? Suicide Isekai Squad, I think a lot of people are disappointed by it. I thought it'd be way, rated way lower. And then Fairy Tale right behind that. Again, Fairy Tale, very much so surprised the show's not doing Nostalgia. that well in the West. Beyond that point, we have a massive. Sp isekai Shikaku should be way higher than. Like, in terms of like quality and enjoyment, it's, it's higher than. Honestly, I'd say Tower of God this season. Genuinely. I believe that Isekai Shikaku this season is better than Tower of God season two. If we're just comparing the anime adaptations, not talking about the fucking webtoon, not talking about the amazing fucking world building. Yeah, I get it. Tower of God is basically the one piece of webtoons, but if we're looking at the fucking anime adaptation, and it's, I don't, I don't really know, but Isekai Shikaku came out of nowhere and surprised me, and it's a delight. Spread. Typically with a lot of seasons, you'll have, yes, a lot of shows that are at the top of it are getting pretty much all the memberships, and then everything else is like, you know, in the 100,000 point. This season. Also, it loops a samurai not even mentioned in the global rankings. And it feels like there's a massive spread of people that are just kind of across a lot of different shows. But beyond the top 10, the only ones that I really want to point out is Makane, Too Many Losing Heroines. Is should be higher up, should be top 10. Easily. Easily over Nokotan. Easily, should be right behind Roshitori in my opinion. Is at number 12. Come on, people. That show is absolutely incredible mm -hmm. and it's not doing that well. Like, this might genuinely be competing for best rom-com of this season. I know that Roche today is airing, but like, Makain, bro? This show is so fun. It's just a roller coaster. You can feel that like A1 Pictures gives a fuck about adapting this show. Everything feels so vibrant, so alive. It's in the plot, dude. It's just stupid fun. Everyone's cocked. It's, 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 it's always a delight to watch every week. The biggest shock, I think, for me is number 15. Yes, Cloverworks, Elusive Sam. It's not that surprising to me because I've already seen the viewership on YouTube for this shit. And again, the Japanese audience love this shit, right? This is a Japanese historical time, but a lot of Western audiences do not like that shit. They cannot really relate. Of course, they can't relate. They never lived through that period. Neither did the Japanese, but it's their culture and history. But I think also on top of the setting that a lot of people don't really prefer, the comedy is jarring, and I think it actually takes away from the show. There are some funny bits here and there, but like when you have such a serious dark tone, 
and then you have these dumbass fucking moments and it just kind of takes away from the whole seriousness of it. I don't know. A lot, a lot of people weren't feeling it. I wasn't really feeling it. Samurai. I assumed based on the conversations that are happening online, a lot of people loving the animation and the... A lot of people are loving the Shotokan making... Sorry, a lot of Shotokans are loving the Shota make blushing faces and making sus ass tweets and those are going viral. That's the extent of it. Art style of the series itself, I figured it would be much higher. But yes, number 15, that's sad. Probably the biggest shock for me, the Don't biggest know this. pain. Oh, this is Monogatari. Well, it is what it is. The thing that is really hurting me right now is Monogatari. No, just because it's unique doesn't mean it's good. You know what's unique? Putting fucking glitters on a piece of shit. Does that mean it's good? No, think about what you're combining. The whole fucking show is supposed to be your entire family getting massacred. Your clan got betrayed. It's such a shocking first episode to set this dire, dark setting. And then, of course, the comedy was there in the first episode. But, like, it genuinely takes away from the show. The comedy does not boost the setting, whatever the story's trying to tell. It's just dumbass fucking moments where it's just like, all right, well, my immersion is gone just to have some shitty ass laughs. Series. Yes, Monogatari series off in Monster Season is way, way down at wait for it. Yeah. Number 25. <laughs> Number 25. You have no one remember. Monogatari overhyped. <laughs> it's pretty niche. It's, it's very, it's, it's, I think uh, there's a love, there, there, the fan base loves it, but come on now. Do you expect it to be competing with shows that a lot of other people can watch, right? Like, how many sequels like, how, do you need to watch to get here, right? There's a lot of filtering process. Not only is it niche, there's it's also so many seasons down. You need to have watched so many things to get into this doesn't surprise me that in a global ranking that something with an, a barrier of accessibility so high like Monogatari will be at this low. It just makes sense to me. Remembers this world, that show, or why no one remembers my world or something like that. That shit's so mid. Why nobody remembers me, bro. That shit's so fucking mid. I'm, I'm, but I hate that title. That's a nobody remembering that anime after I dropped that. Nobody's remembering that anime after, you know, the season ends. Doesn't mean the source material is bad, but the adaptation was, ugh. Above it. That show is beating the Monogatari series. It's an absolute shock for me, and I'm still trying to figure out exactly what happened here. I'm actually- What happened is that the barrier of accessibility. How many Monogatari series? First of all, Monogatari is already niche. And then you need to have to watch all those shit to appreciate this one. It just doesn't make sense. Nobody remembers me. Anyone can just check it out. You have a fucking busty ass elf slave girl tied up to a pillar in the cover picture. Of course they're gonna click it. It makes sense to me actually doing a whole other video i'm not sure if i'll actually put it together and finalize it but i'm trying to figure out what happened with the monogatari series that used to be a series that everybody talked about i mean it's first season did everybody talk about maybe they did but sometimes we're in our little bubbles and we don't really understand how big this ocean of you know fish are and we're just in this tiny little section on mal has like 1.5 million registered members it's just kind of a big shock to me that the show's not doing that well. The other one that's kind of a heartbreak to me, but I kind of understand it. Even mm, This is the 11-minute uh, special, sorry, not special, shorts, right? Uh, the rom-com one. No, I don't because it's Studio Bones, is yes, the Magical Girl and the Evil Lieutenant. That's way down at 27. Both Evil Lieutenant and Monogatari series, please, people, go watch it. Anyhow, now that we've seen the terrible taste of the West. <laughs> That's right, brother. Only the Japanese have the correct opinions. Let's see now what the East thinks. Well, I'm just joking. It's really just those two main ones that really breaks my heart. Yes, let's look at Japan. Yeah. <laughs> those that have good taste. Let's see. Let's start things off with Abima. Yes, Abima is an anime streaming service. A lot of different anime has a lot of exclusivities for the platform itself. To name one, my dear friend has a couple day exclusive. And right now... We're not comparing any data that suggests that this has more viewership, right? The global rankings that Otaku Spirit just did was based on the ratings of my anime list and any list. Meaning, this doesn't show how many people actually watch the show, it just shows this is the rating that people have given after watching it. So I'm not really sure how good of a metric this really is to go off of, but I, I wanted to see like, like a compilation of different data based on viewership, but maybe he will talk about that, right? There's broadcast rankings, right? 
there's Amazon's JP, Netflix JP streaming rankings. So first he'll do the ratings and then maybe we'll go more into those viewership category data. Activity for the platform itself. Let's start from the bottom. Let's actually build into this for once. Let's start right. off at number 10. Number 10 yeah. is Makane, too many losing heroines. Still that low? Japan loves their NTR. What's going on? Again, this is a this is a sad one for me. So it does seem like at least there's a consistency, at least with Abima, that it's in the same boat as over here. It's very shocking that this show is not doing better. I, I like uh, right now of all the episodes I've seen of this show, I would be comfortable putting this like I don't want to say eight minimum. 7.5 minimum, and we can argue if it can go into 8. Like, this show is genuinely great. I meant to go look at that specifically to see if there's some sort of exclusivity they have on a different site. I think on Amazon, even on Amazon, it's rankings pretty low as well. Hopefully, it's just doing very well on television. At number 9, we have Tensura Season 3, which, again, uh. it's kind of a shocker there, but it's probably the, that... Uh, the shocker was that the global audience rated this shit so high. I thought people were pissed off, but Japan's actually pissed off because it was ranked number one in the global rankings, but now it's number nine. Most people are watching it on a different platform or on television. Elusive Samurai at number eight. So at least it's doing deep. Mm -hmm. What I say, it's going to be higher in Japan, right? And I think Oshinoko is also going to be... I mean, global rankings, Oshinoko was already super high. So my YouTube viewership analytics, you know, it doesn't really apply but we're talking about ratings right now, and this is not like how many people actively searching for the anime. Decently well there. <laughs> and then right above that, we have my dear friend Nokotan. Again, yeah. another big shocker there. No, like I said earlier, this is the platform that is trying to push it. Like they have like a several day exclusivity with Abima. I think even for a while, Crunchyroll wasn't getting it right off the bat. So even. <sighs> I feel so bad for Nokotan. It's such a cute, stupid little show. I know it's not amazing. It's the fun, dumb watch. Nokotan's so cute. But now it's just people are shitting on it. I'm like, no, my poor dear girls. And they were being locked out of exclusivity for like the first few episodes. But it does seem like it's not as popular as at least the memeing and the, mm -hmm. and the viral campaigns they had online was going. Yeah, again, that shit was just too good. The memeing, the viral campaigns, it succeeded too hard created this imaginary bar of expectations that no one could deliver on for it right above that at number six we have roshadere so okay. that's doing really well there as well again alia sometimes hides her feelings in russian number five we have nobody's <laughs> way up to it <laughs> lolicons brigading the rating really top five in japan yeah i, I could see it i could see it in japan or tour hero so Apparently with the beam of that show is doing really well again. <laughs> Typically with every single season, you'll have that. What do you think? Why do you think it's doing well, bro? Japan loves their NTR. They love their shodas. They love their lollies. These shows that feel like everybody in the West thinks it's the biggest pile of garbage ever. But it's pretty shit, bro. We watched like, what, two or three episodes until at least that uh, the other lolly showed up. Because there's like the angel one and there's like a devil one. The premise seemed interesting, right? We call it lolly leveling because it seems like solo leveling in terms of like a gate and like, you know, dungeons and shit, but pretty stupid show. <laughs> I heard the source material is pretty decent and the anime adaptation has cut a lot of stuff out and that's why a lot of people are pissed off. But in the beginning, there was some attention for the show because of the source material. But for a lot of people in Japan, they're like, it's just fun and they just want a fun show to watch. They don't really want to think too much about it. Even the same thing with number four, we have, yes, the What? This show? This was pretty mid. Like, it just got carried by the waifus, and the plot was unique in the sense that, right, the good guys in the Demon King's army, and we're trying to have peace. But interesting, it's that high up. Okay, Japan, I see you. Demon King's army, uh, the lieutenant whatever is a human. That one's doing very well as well. Now, here's the big thank you so much. Here's yeah. my big... Thank you, Japan moment that I typically have with every single one of these videos. Monogatari is going to get rated high next, right? It was Monogatari <laughs> yep. series. <laughs> How did I know? Uh, Otaku Spirit seems to be very biased for Monogatari series because I bet it is pretty good. I just never had a chance to see it, right? I think that Otaku Spirit, does he like Mushoku Tensei better or Monogatari better? Do you guys know? Off in Monster Season at number three for Abima. Okay. Thank you. It's getting okay. recognition somewhere. <laughs> on some platform in Japan, it's actually liked. And that just... And remember, this is all on this Abima. I have no clue what the fuck Abima is. Right? I'm going to assume it's some sort of like Netflix for Japan. It's warms or my anime. heart because, my gosh, the Monotari series. Come on, people. Now, it immediately breaks my heart. What? Okay. 
This show is fun, but this is not top two. What? Un insane. What? This shit is again fun. I give it like a 6.9 out of 10 right now. Doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean it's amazing. It's just scratching that power fantasy itch, but really this high up? Because number two is <laughs> the rookie old man <laughs> trained by the S ranks. <laughs> that show is beating the Monogatari series. So even that is disrespectful. <laughs> that, that that is disrespectful, right? That this random ass fucking power fantasy garbage slob is beating up the legendary Monogatari series. <laughs> Why? 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 Is this just a relatable character? A lot of Abima users feel like they're the 30 year old man that can get back and chase their dreams. Maybe. I, I don't know. Maybe Kaiju A was also popping off fucking before. I know why. I don't know why. The fan service is honestly not that like amazing compared to the other shows. There's plenty of other fan service in the other shows, man. I don't think the titties are carrying it, nor do I think the plot carries it. Is it just really Renet? Is it really just Dark Elf? Like, that's it? I, I don't know. Even if I win right here, I'm going to lose right here. But whatever, it's fine. At number one. Yeah. Oshinoko number one in Japan. Japan loves Oshinoko based on my assumption of, again, the JP subtitles for freshest animes, Oshinoko reactions compared to every other Oshinoko reactions on YouTube that does not cater towards the Japanese audience. It is such a gap in viewership. Yes. Again, Oshinoko season mm -hmm. two is just topping the charts in the Bima. It's Oshinoko, I was a little bit worried in the beginning of season two because it started off slow, handling all the different problems with the script writing and before the theater. But once the theater started, bro, oh my God. The last like three or four Oshinoko episodes has just been peak, 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 peak. Genuinely, it's been that good. It's just, it's just taking the cake. It's just like across the board, Oshinoko is just wrecking things. Moving on from there, we have Netflix Japan. Yes, I'm adding Netflix Japan okay. to my Japanese ranking videos after many times of people yelling at me. Abima versus Netflix. I wonder which is better. Probably Abima? I don't know. It's finally here. The only reason I never used Netflix Japan is one, I didn't know they actually made I need to add JP subs. Well, I thought about it, right? I mean, Freshest Anime did tell me how to do it. And he, was, he was generous enough to let me know what's going on. And it's like a little experiment that he's doing. And it is working really well. But my idea, my logic is, let's say I added the JP subtitles, right? And I attracted that JP audience. Great. But that's just for Oshinoko, you know? You remember what I told you about the YouTube algorithm? Once those Japanese audience get introduced to my channel, Every other video that I don't have JP subtitles, they're not going to click on it. They become dead subs except just for Oshinoko. You know what I mean? And then what? I add JP subs to everything? That's a little excessive. I don't think I need to rely on that. I don't. And on top of that, the JP subs don't even know how it overlay that on Patreon too. Like if your goal is to get that viewership to come in, then they're obviously going to try to push them to Patreon. But on Patreon side, how are you going to do it? The built, it's like the YouTube subtitles. You're feeding it in on Patreon. You need to actually have that shit separately overlaid on the video somehow. There's, there's a lot of different problems that I've thought about that I just doesn't think justifies pandering towards an audience again that is just not going to be my community at the end of the day. They're just tourists, so it's fine. A top list thing, the site itself, but secondly, because they don't show the actual data. Yes, Netflix says these are the top ranking things, but... <laughs> so Netflix could be just making shit up behind the scenes to fucking manipulate rankings and make some shows, you know, get more views even though they don't deserve it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, got it. I never know why. What's the viewership? They never give you a viewership count, and that's they kind of the tapping. unfortunate thing about it. But anyhow, we're going to use it. Sites like Video Research and Kanto and stuff like that, and they don't list the numbers either, so it's fine. In order to put together an actual top five list, I went ahead and went through every single week all the way back to July, and then based on their placement on the top ten list, I decided to give it different weight, and that gave me a list of five titles in ranking. Starting at okay. number five for Netflix Japan is My Dear Friend Nokotan. Not high now, up. This was on the chart about like three times. And I don't even know like what other animes are specifically on Netflix Japan, right? Because Netflix is not gonna have every anime that's airing this season, right? Same with the Bima. I don't know. I'm, I don't know how this shit even like. 
I don't even know which animes are even categorized right now. It wasn't too high, but still it's doing decently well on Netflix. Now I will say that I don't think it's been on the chart for quite a while now, so I think there's been a massive drop off for it. Rising Impact is also a similar case. It did really well early on. It just seems like it kind of drops off, but still it's- What the fuck is this in? It's a golf, oh shit. Yo, I might watch this by myself. Yeah, I probably would enjoy this. I love sports anime. It's a golf anime. I'll fucking watch it. Look at the characters, bro. I bet there's a fucking sick ass, you know, tournament arc. Set number four. Rosha Dere is. Dude, if you haven't seen this, this is a manga called King Golf. I know we're getting off topic right now, but bro, read this. Read this shit. The plot is basically. Japanese delinquent who is just athletically gifted as fuck that's never golfed before gets into golf because he loses to this pretty boy who is like a genius in Japan and then he chases after his rival knowing nothing about golf and he goes through like crazy training arcs it's like it's unreal like bro like king golf like let me show you some of the fucking art like oh man it, it's, it's actually so fucking hype in the beginning like he fucking shows everyone that he can just golf Everyone thinks he's all talk. They call him Predator too because of his hair. And he fucking swings with one arm and he, bl he blows everyone away. There's this one arc. It's called the fucking The Drive. King Golf. Drive Con Arc. Bro. This shit. King Golf Manga. Uh, there's probably not enough. There's probably not enough here. But like, man. The, like, the hype. The absolute hype as he goes around parading. Look at this, right? He's so disrespectful. He's such a delinquent. He's so, like, not textbook. Everyone is like, have some fucking respect for this sh game. But then he proves it with his own result. It's just so hype. It's just so fucking hype. You guys should go read it if you like, you know, sports shit. Is doing very, very well in Netflix Japan. It's been on the charts several times. I put that number three. The Elusive Samurai is doing extremely well as well. Course, so I put that course. number two. And of course, number one, because gosh dang, it was like not a single week that it wasn't doing incredibly well on Netflix. Number one is Oshinoko second season again. And that's the craziest thing. The talk in the global audience is, did Oshinoko fall off? Did Oshinoko fall off? Because a lot of content creators tries to make Oshinoko content, but there is no viewership. Genuinely. The global audience does not give a fuck. Even if the global ranking is high, this does not prove the actual amount of people clicking to watch the videos. But again, in Japan, they really rate this shit high. We did rate it high in global as well, but I just think that there's more Japanese people rating it high and seeking out that content. Well, in the global audience, the English-speaking audience, People just don't give a fuck. Another website that this show is just absolutely taking off. I love to see the love. Moving on to Amazon, I did find a site that was trying to aggregate rankings and it's called Flix Patrol, but I've seen a lot of mixed responses to the actual platform and how they're getting their data. I've seen a lot of people reporting inconsistencies with our data versus actual reportings from Netflix, but I did use their data and then cross reference it to the actual site itself and checked out the rankings and the ratings on the site itself with amazon.co.jp. If you look at okay. just data based Based on actual rankings alone, Tensura season three is taking the cake. That show has much more responses and much more rankings that are going to it. Now, I don't care about these rankings and ratings though. I want to see amount of people seeking out that content. And sometimes I guess you can use Google Trends to see, you know, search keywords and stuff like that. But just like data that suggests people are actively seeking out these episodes. And if we could have some sort of standardized way to compare, that would be really helpful. Now, unfortunately, what comes from that is also the reason for that. And that is mainly because, yes, there's a lot of negativity going on right yes. now, even in Japan, for how many meanings they have. So despite the fact that Tensura's third season has the most rankings and the most responses to their actual... Yeah, responses and rankings. Sometimes it's fucking hate comments saying, this just bullshit. Get this fucking table out of my episode. Well, listing, it also is at a 2.7. Nokatan's right behind it. Again, a lot of negativity. Yeah, a lot of negativity. A lot of people saying, this shit ain't the thing that I thought it would be based off the opening of the trailers. What the fuck? But he's being thrown at it. It's getting a lot of rankings, but it's at a 2.5. If you look at the shows that have the best rankings overall, it's easily probably Elusive Samurai. It has a Shut lot of rankings actually given to the show itself and it's extremely positive at a 
I know why it is, because these are Japanese rankings and ratings, and it's a Japanese historical show, Japanese pride. Of course you're gonna, you know, want to glaze this show, and it's a good show, decent show. That at 4.3. Alia sometimes hides her feelings of Russian is right behind it with a 3.6, and then right behind that is Osunoko season 2 at a 3.8. Again, based on rankings alone, those ones are getting a lot of attention. Just for reference, Flix Patrol also lists for Amazon JP, My Hero Academia 7th Season, Makane, Wistoria, and Roshidere. And for our last list out of Japan, we have mm -hmm. Anime Ega, which again, they use information from Demora, which is Demora. a broadcasting aggregation type of service. And they actually have a contender that has not been listed quite yet. Oh? Yes, at number 10, they has Shoshimen, How to Become Ordinary. Dude, the amount of fucking snobby, dude, I swear to God, there's these weirdo, insecure motherfuckers that only watches, like, these slice of life shit that looks down on other action and combat and hype shit and says, huh, you guys are so brain dead, I'm watching Shoshimin and I am so much smarter than you as an anime in George. It's like, shut the fuck up. I was not really expecting to see that on really any ranking sites, but apparently somebody's watching. I mean, it's a beautiful show. Don't get me wrong, but it's it's actually good to finally see that kind of pop up. At number nine, they have Senpai is oh, Otokonoko, which is another one that has not been listed yet. At number eight, Sakuna Rice and Ruin. Again, another shocker right there. Number seven, Yatogarasu is... I don't trust any of these Demora broadcast rankings. Based on the shows that they've shown me, none of these shows align with any of my audience and any of the audience that I know. Other people definitely are not fucking talking about these animes. And I'm not crazy, right? I'm not crazy, right? What the fuck are these shows? I bet it's good, but I'm talking about are people seeking that content out? Why is Demora so different from Amazon JP, Netflix JP, Abima, like... Three separate platforms that pretty much had the similar animes. And then Demora just has all the fucking unknown, unspoken animes that some people glaze as being amazing, but just people just don't have the attention span or like the enlightenment to watch it. Ruin, again, another shocker right there. Number seven, Yatogarasu is still holding on there. And again, I think I noted that in the last season's ranking list that yes, finally Yatogarasu is getting some sort of attention. It has been a fantastic series, so it's good to see it there. Number six, Elusive Samurai. Number five, My Hero Academia, seventh season. Number four, Kinikuman. <laughs> Peace! I should watch this shit by myself at night too. Kinikuman. I'm looking for some fun shit. After I finished Captain Tsubasa. Uh, recently, the remake, and I'm like at nighttime. I want something new to watch. Maybe I'll watch Captain Kinokuman, bro. I don't, I don't, I know you, you asses aren't fucking gonna let me watch it on my YouTube channel. So maybe this one. Mm -hmm. Number three, the Fable. Again, that's another Fable, one that's still huh? holding on to Demora. Number two, again, Oshinoko. Oshinoko, still wrecking it. And number, and one, number one, Reincarnation of Slime, third season. So in the end, very, very interesting data that we're getting across the board. I think I'm really happy to see that. It'd be nice to understand what animes were, ex like, actually rated. Like, Amazon, Netflix, Demura, Demura, Abima, I'm sure they all have different groups of anime. They don't have every anime on there. If they had every anime on there, then these results are very interesting. But it's most likely that Demura has a separate fucking set of anime that they only have. And I don't know. It's At the end of the day, it, it is pretty shocking to see that, like... Tensor is rated that high, but again, some of these ratings and uh, different rankings are based on how many like engagements there are, and there's also a lot of pissed off people talking shit about it. Really, in both the West and in Japan, Reincarnation is a slime. Oshinoko second season, My Hero Academia seventh season, and Roshidere are all mm -hmm. kind of just holding yeah. the top of the charts. That sounds about right to me, for sure. I think that again, YouTube anime reaction viewership is not a. a like a, you cannot take like a conclusive result from that and apply it towards like a global audience. However, those animes like Roshitere, Tensura, you know, fucking uh, what's the other one? Oshinoko, right? These are definitely popping off this season for a lot of different channels as well. Like, like relatively to their own viewership, if you look at some of these shows, you can definitely tell that there is like a boost. So at least it seems like the top four is really kind of equal across the board. We have kind of a, a season for once that it really feels like everybody's kind of on the same page. Again, after looking at the data, I think my biggest shock is really around my dear friend Okotan. As much as that show seemed to be blowing up the internet, not a single day went by where you didn't see that stupid song on your mm -hmm. Twitter feed or your whatever social media.
Some people really love it, but again, some people also get really pissed off at it if you keep spamming that shit. It's a weird thing where a lot of people will get in on the virality and hype, but there's also going to be other group of people that feels left out because they never got on it. And the more they see it, the more they're reminded of how they're not part of it and they get more uh, jaded against it you're using but it seems like despite all that strong marketing and the memeability of it failed. it doesn't seem like many people really like the show again just the marketing team went so crazy like again like <laughs> they they did better marketing than actually making the anime but that's not really fair because maybe the marketing this like again created this imaginary bar of expectations that the anime never could have delivered on despite it being exclusive on abima for quite a while it doesn't seem like it's even doing good on that site. But yes, my biggest joy out of all this is Monogatari. obviously seeing the Mangatari series is at least doing well on Abima. It seems like every single season I'll have at that one show where I'm like, why doesn't this show get more attention over in the West? And then at least I see it in Japan, at least it's doing well here. Like I had that case with Onimai. Literally the first video I made where I was looking through these Japanese rankings was because Onimai wasn't doing well in the West. And I wanted a reason to say Onimai. Yeah, I know why this doesn't do well in the West. I know definitely why, but it does well in, the, in JP. It's the same logic that we apply to Elusive Samurai and Exploration Hero. Just look at it. Do I need to, like, is this that confusing? I think that a lot of, there's more Lollicons and Shotokans in Japan compared to the West. I think that that culture is a lot more accepted. So, of course, that, like, Japan's going to do better, I think. At least it's good in Japan. <laughs> this season monetary series is that for me anyhow with all that said i hope you guys enjoy this video as always definitely let me know in the comments down below thank you so much otaku spirit for the breakdown of different rankings and ratings across many different platforms and yes i think that like shows like oshinoko roshitere right too many losing heroines is also kind of up there in terms of viewership on the youtube side but again it's not youtube viewership is not end all be all but for sure, there's a lot of overlap in different rated high animes as well as, you know, uh, YouTube video performance. But thank you so much, Mr. Otaku Spirit. Guys, please go give a sub and like his channel. I promise that I'm not sub to him because he posts Mushoku Tensei content that I fear that I'll get spoiled on due to the thumbnails. But hey, go give him a like, go sub to his channel, and I'll see you on the next one.